And also we know that Captain Cook, when he arrived there in Cook's Beach, the Maoris allegedly said to him, Puki Pakiha, which in Puki means ship, and so Puki Pakiha means men who taste nice who arrived in a ship. And so this means that the Maoris already knew about white people and eating white people and coming against them. And that's because, of course, there are some fair skinned Maoris living in New Zealand at that time. We've always believed from the history that was handed down by Piki Te Piki Kōtuku, our great-great-grandfather, that we came from the, this ancient place outside of Egypt named ancient Persia. Today it is named Iran or Iran, whichever way you want to say it. Well, when I told my family, oh, they were proud when I told them that they came from ancient Persia. Some of them said, oh, are we Arabs? Yeah. I said, well, actually, we'd be described as being Egyptian yeah. more than Arabs. Oh, there yeah. they are. Hello. <laughs> this is only some of them. Yeah. i got 64 together. <gasps> yeah, that's Expensive grandchildren, Christmas. greats and great greats. We're quite, br we're quite proud of it. Oh, gosh, right. oh we really you? are. This is my mum. Her name was Tangi Maria Teararo Karauti. My mother was the one that gave me the history and she wanted us to know just who we were and who we are. This is my dad, Hawani James Ham. His mother was a waratini, and the waratini are the blue-eyed Ngāti Hōtu of Whakatāne. This was my husband, Iki Whenua Mātāmua, who passed away in 2007. He is of Tūhoi descent, and they too are of Ngāti Hōtu. I have here a photograph of my grandmother and my grandfather, Te Araroa Karauti. And my grandmother was red-headed and she had the green eyes. And she was a very, very fair lady. This photograph is of Janet. Of my ten children, she was the only one that really resembled me. And she is the only one of my ten children that had the green eyes. But apart from that, a lot of my grandchildren do too. We couldn't believe our eyes when we first saw Monica's family. Right in front of us was a living representation of the green-eyed, golden-haired people we've been looking for. They're not just fairy folk of the forest, or mythical beings. They are real. We wonder what motivated Monica to publish her story. Well, in 2006, I was at the hearings and this witness was saying that we were no more, that Ngāti Hōtu had been wiped out, eaten out. It was quite hurtful hearing this story, and I was sitting there and I thought, oh, the hell with this. I'm going to take this through the Waitangi Tribunal and prove that we still exist. And I, I gave my history, and the judge at the time, which was Judge Wainwright, she put it on the internet and it went worldwide, and there was a lot of, a lot of hits came back from everywhere who knew of the people of Ngāti Hōtu and it was seen by uh, the e-local magazine who took up the story. And so you might ask where is the archaeological evidence supporting the idea that white people were living in New Zealand long before the Marys arrived here around 1350 AD at the earliest? And the answer to that question is found in the stone structures that are found around the place. And for example here we see a stone hinge in Northland, and nearby to that there is this what is called a Cronus stone, and on a tributary going into the Hokianga Harbour we see this pillar which has a map of the North Island on one side and of the South Island on the other side, and when you look at the North Island you see Lake Taupo there in the middle, and when you look at the accuracy of this map compared to the accuracy of the map that Captain Cook drew with his astrolabe you'd have to conclude that the people that drew this first map also had an astrolabe, which is a sophisticated instrument from the Northern Hemisphere. And also we see, for example, these stone walls south of the Hokianga. And some people believe that these stone walls in one place actually spell out the word Yahweh. And when you look further down, you see these stone walls at the Kaipara Harbour and also at Waitara. 
and across at the Kaimanawa Walls there near Lake Taupo. And there's also other evidence in the form of skeletons that have been found around the place. So let's have a look now at the skeletons of white people that have been found in caves around the North Island, particularly in Northland. This is one of the caves that uh, had all the uh, skeletons of the two who white heart people stacked in. There's skulls and skeletons all around here. In 1961, uh, Robinson Bone Mill came up from Only Hunger and uh, gathered them all up, paid all the workers for up into sack. To grind up his bone dust fertiliser. And they were all shipped out of uh, to Copra here, the Arncombe Stabler were there, and they counted these skulls in each sack, and uh, they estimate at least 60,000 skeletons were recovered from just this one region. And for fortunately, um, they didn't get them all. There's a couple of caves with these fellas in. The, the coffin's about five foot long, made out of New Zealand Tower. I was very keen to uh, <clears throat> get DNA and everything done on, you know, who were these people, where'd they come from? And I was at a conference some years ago in uh, Rotorua and there was a forensic pathologist from England. Uh, I, I was talking to him about them. He said, oh, I've got a few days after the conference, I'll come up. So he spent three days with me. I took him around these various sites and he examined these there's just one of the many sites. I took him to about five different sites. Oh yeah, yeah, about four foot, four foot three. And, and you know, well, you see the skeletons. He examined them all, measured them, and he took an eye tooth to England. And 18 months later, he says, "No, those are ancient Celtic people living in Wales three and a half thousand years ago. This is where they originated from." This is not the only genetic information that links the fair-skinned Māori to the Celts. Jean Dossier did a study on the redheads of Easter Island and found that their DNA was very close to the Basque and Welsh populations of ancient Europe. And so all the skeletons that have been found around New Zealand belong to a pre-Māori period and the Māori's referred to these people as the fairy people but we know they're not really a mythical fairy people at all, that they were white people that lived here before the Marys arrived. And in some parts of the country they're referred to as the Turehu, and in other parts they're referred to as the Padapai Rihi, and also other names. And there's also evidence of other civilizations that are non mary civilizations coming to New Zealand, such as this mast that's found on the 90 mile beach of a Chinese junket. And also we see this helmet that was found in the harbour in Wellington, which is a Spanish helmet. And many people attribute this to the voyages of Juan Fernandez in 1572 AD.